Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at an introduction of sexual reproduction and then we'll finish with a summary. The definition of sexual reproduction is the production of a new individual, so a new organism, and this is done by the joining of two gamete cells, such as the sperm cell and the egg cell, and when they join together they form a cell called a zygote. So essentially, two individuals donate different types of gametes. So the male gamete is known as the sperm, the female gamete is known as the egg or the egg cell. And essentially these two will come together and form one single cell with all of their combined contents. And the cell that's formed in that fusion is called the zygote. And then the zygote will develop into an individual. There is another type of reproduction known as asexual reproduction. And it has some differences between sexual reproduction. The sexual reproduction induces genetic variation in the offspring from the two individuals which improves their chances of survival. So in other words, in asexual reproduction, one individual basically clones themselves to produce an exact copy of their genetic material. So any product or individual made from asexual reproduction will be a clone of the parent. So if this was the way that individuals were made and offspring was made, then all of the offspring would be ident identical to each other. However, in sexual reproduction, this doesn't happen. Two gametes come together from the male and the female gametes, and these will form individuals which have different genetic makeups. So there's variation genetically between them. So in the case of offspring, except for twins and triplets and clones, then all of the offspring will have genetic variation between them. They may look like their parents and share some features like blue eyes or certain types of hair, but overall they're their own unique organisms and having variation increases the chance of survival. So it's a very important process. We mentioned before that the gametes are particular cells and they're specialized cells. And gametes, unlike most body cells, contain only one set of chromosomes. So we describe them as being haploid. So remember, every individual has a certain number of chromosomes and usually each of those chromosomes has its own copy. So we tend to have two versions of each chromosome. But in a gamete, one gamete cell only has one copy from each of those pairs. So it only has half the genetic material, and which is why we call it haploid. In a normal body cell, we have the normal situation where we have a pair of every type of chromosome. So we call this N, and we would call this 2N, and therefore this would be diploid. So haploid is half, diploid is the full set of two for each pair. The gamete cells get formed in a process called meiosis, and meiosis is different to mitosis, which involves somatic cells. So in meiosis, a cell with the whole set of chromosomes, 2N, will form gametes, which only each have N. Because remember, the gametes have to be haploid. In contrast, in mitosis, which happens for every other type of cell in the body, i.e. somatic cells, the 2N basically produces two copies, which both have 2N. So it just times itself by two, making two new cells with the same original contents. So this is for all other types of cell in the body. And of course, this is important. If the gametes are haploid cells, then when they come together, they'll produce a cell that has a full set of chromosomes. The haploid cells are required during reproduction because the combination of two diploid cells would result in an offspring with twice as many chromosomes. So if we just left the gametes as they were with a full set of chromosomes, when that comes together with the other gamete, which is 2N, we're going to form a 4N. And if we repeat that process again, then it would form 8N. And it would just keep going on and on, and every single generation would have twice as many chromosomes. So in humans, for example, there would be 184 chromosomes after only two generations. So haploid cells are important in keeping this down to half every time gametes are made so that this doesn't produce 4n or 8n. The half will become n, and so when two n's come together, it will always make 2n. So this individual will be 2n, and then those gametes will be n again, and it will just keep going and staying at the number of 2n. The reason this is bad is because too many chromosomes can cause many cell types, including human cells, to break down, because they're only stable when their nuclei are diploid. So what this means is that we have to keep certain cells at a certain number of chromosomes. So in human cells, we only do well when we have these two sets of chromosomes. 
If we allowed this to happen where it kept multiplying and growing in numbers, we would suffer. So we have to make sure the gametes only have half, so that when they come together they only make two, and then they go down to half again, and so on and so forth. There are some organisms which can deal with this. Some plants are stable with polyploidal nuclei, so what this means is that they can be happy and survive with polyploidal rather than just diploid. So this means many versions of chromosomes, so more than two. And one example of an organism which can deal with this is the giant strawberry, which can have eight sets of chromosomes. So the cells in the giant strawberry can have eight versions of chromosomes, whereas in a human cell it would be very unstable. So this would be octoploidy. So we can have gametes in both plant organisms and animal organisms, and in this slide we're going to be talking about those found in plants. The sex organs of the plants are basically the organs which make the gametes, and they're often only temporary. So what this means is they're only present in the plant when they're flowering. So when plants are flowering, this is when they enter their reproductive phase. So the sex organs are only present in this flowering stage. In other times of the year, when they're not flowering, those sex organs tend to disappear. And with sex organs, just like gametes, we have to have male and female versions. The male sex organs of the plant are known as the anthers, and the anthers produce pollen, and the pollen contains the male gametes. So if we're looking at a plant here, we have these structures looking like this, and this brown structure on the end is known as an anther, and the anther makes pollen. This is the substance that gives people hay fever. So if you look closely at the plant, what you'll see is that these anthers are covered in pollen, or pollen grains, and inside the pollen are where we find the male gametes. So those individual cells which need to be fused with a female gamete to produce a new zygote and therefore a new individual. The female sex organs of the plant are known as the ovaries, and the ovaries contain ovules in which the female gametes are found. So looking at the plant again, this structure here is what's known as the ovary, and inside the ovary we have multiple ovules, and inside those are the female gametes. So the female gametes in the ovules will eventually need to fuse with the pollen gametes from the male. But what you'll notice with plants, which is different to animals, is that the male and the female organs can exist on the same plant. The pollen will go to the female organ of another plant, but every plant does have male and female sex organs. Gametes in animals have a different structure to those found in plants. So the sex organs of complex animals are usually more permanent structures known as the gonads. So the permanent structures of the sex organs are found from birth and they will stay throughout life. The male sex organs are known as the gonads of the animals, are known as the testes, and they basically produce the male gametes. And the male gamete cells are known as spermatozoa, or more commonly known as sperm. So the testes are what make the male gametes known as the sperm. The female sex organs, also called the gonads of animals, are known as the ovaries, just like in plants, and they produce female gametes, which are known as the ova, or the more common term for this are the eggs. So here we have a diagram where these structures here are the ovaries. There's one on either side, and they produce the ova, which are the individual female gametes, which can be fertilized by the sperm cells, or the spermatozoa. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the Snap Revised smiley face, and together, let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.